Hey, what's up, world? It's your man Carlos Miller, man. Make sure that you head over to 85apparelco.com and grab you some fresh merch, man. Get you a hat, a hoodie, a t-shirt, some socks, a life jacket, um, anything, man. We got all that, all of that, man, from like onesies for the baby. We even got special items for the ladies coming out with my own foot massager. Well, that's what I'm gonna call it anyway. Whatever, that's 85apparelco.com. Go grab you something. And support the movement, man, because the 85 South ain't just about the 85 South. It's about all of us. Yo, Indianapolis, April 14th, I'm coming to the Helium Comedy Club. Grab them tickets because they on sale now. Yes, I'm doing the My 600 Pound Life Live. This is the last year that I'm going on tour doing this. So you better get them tickets now because I don't want to hear, oh, you didn't come here and do it. Yes, I'm coming April 14th at the Helium Comedy Club. Go ahead and get them tickets now. They on sale. Literally, bro, we finished filming at 11 p.m. At 12.30 was my set, 12.30 a.m. is my session. Mm -hmm. I got six hours to now close out. I'm a singer. singer. So I'm a singer, so I'm, I've am i been talking all day. Mm -hmm. I've been learning lines, and, it, as, and you know, as an actor, no, it's mentally yeah. draining, bro. Yeah, you got the, yeah. Yeah. Strength. Straining, and then even mentally, like, to be, to do the same line over and over and over and over all day, mm -hmm. it goes, it, 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 it's hard. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so you finish, so I gotta now go into creative. And I have six hours, I don't have a hit on my project yet. We're talking about 12 to 6 in the morning. 12 to 6 in the morning. 12.30 okay. a.m. Mm -hmm. to 6 a.m. Do you have to go to set the next day? And I have, a, I have to go to set 9 a.m. I'm, I'm not going to sleep. So I'm like, all right, cool. I got I to gotta give him a hit. Mm -hmm. I got six hours. Niggas usually, usually get six weeks to do what I'm about to do. Niggas get six months to do what I have to do. Mm -hmm. Six hours. I go in, play the beat. Again, this is divine. This is all God, yo. They play the beat. My man plays. Um... Love rhythm. And this instinctively it was like, baby, baby, yeah, I don't say too much. That came out like, boom. I was like, yo, all right, cool. Let me just go lay this. I don't know what's going to happen to it, but whoa, whoa. they sent it to me. The next day, they're like, yo, we got a hit in our hand. I sent it to Empire. They're like, this is the single. So that's just to give a perspective that doing both mm -hmm. is literally trying to be a doctor and a lawyer at the same time. That's why most people can't do it. Mm -hmm. Who can be a doctor and a lawyer at the same time? You can't. It's not. It's impossible That's unless it. unless you have the right team, the right this, the right. Everything has to work instinctively. So and and, and and again with God. So like for me, six hours I was able to make a record that most people get six months to do, mm -hmm. and it's just again a testament to not being not having the wiggle room like most people do. I have mm -hmm. to. I have to. to commit. Every time I can't miss. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because then it's like. He, he ain't that nice anyway. I really he's an actor. Right. You get what I'm saying? Right. So I wear yeah, that. He was a different persona. You you Bro. gangster and a ladies man. Yeah. We that, two different characters. Like. I mean butter scotch is a real thing. Yeah. Butter scotch. Yeah. Butter scotch. Yeah. I can't explain that yeah. one. Yeah, that one I can't explain. You can be both hated and both loved at the hey, same hey, time. Hey, hey, Jesus is the same way, no? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus is the same, same way. way. You know? No, you do a music first before all the acting oh, and all that. Bro, let, my, my story is crazy, bro. So Shit, um, we about to tell that motherfucker yeah, there and watch yeah, this. Yeah. Welcome back. Yeah. <laughs> Play that shit first. <laughs> That's how we feeling. That's how you feeling with the vibe. I said, "Welcome warm my clothes." Oh, it's hard, bro. Oh, yeah, we're back out to play. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. What's up? What the fuck? Got something for you? Yeah. I got something for you. Yeah. <laughs> no cap. I love it. I love it. We gotta do the intro of the day, man. This is a real pun. Got it. Some people don't see what those cap. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. We got my dog in the building, man. We got a uh, real mogul, a real icon, a real African brother, Nene, in the blood. You understand? He's a multi-platinum artist. You dig what I'm saying? He's an amazing actor. He's an amazing father. He's an incredible friend. He's an executive. He's a producer. He's a writer. I don't think y'all understand, man. My man got so many hats. He got so many talents, you did. None other than my dog, Rosini! Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Good, yeah. 
Come on, somebody. It feels good to be here. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus, I'm back. <laughs> Man, it's so hard not to talk like that with you. Right? My goodness, it is so happy to have oh you here. That was, that was very, very good. Yeah, I have, I have been to Africa many times, and I am very, very happy to have someone here who I can give me the real. Oh yeah. I watch his stories. I don't think he. That's the most I've stalked you. When you, when you, when you in Ghana, every time you go to Africa. I got to jump in the bed and be like, she go down. Yeah. And you see, every time. You be walking this shit, I be like, that nigga ain't got no shoes on. Yeah. Every time I'm over there, you see it. Ain't the time I'm over there with somebody. Ain't... Where's this young fly in Carlos yeah. Miller? He on his Tell them, bro. Come here. They love him, bro. Bro, like, bro. listen, I was in Ghana. I'm walking down the street. This nigga gave me dap for five blocks. I'm talking about. He grabbed my hand and walked uh, with five me, man. You please, please call them. Can you call them for me, please? Yeah. Just so I can say hello. We love you here. And then to yeah. see the type of, the way that they consume content over there, it's yeah. so much, like, you don't even realize how much you've done what? until you go to another part of the world yeah. and see how people are consuming the work that you put in. Bro. Like, because they showing me stuff that we did years, years ago. ago. They appreciate it. And I'm like, yo, I don't even remember doing this. And they were like, we love this. Back if I ever go. What? I'm like, you know what? Just stay. I'm like, I mean, it, it, it feel like that. Whatever. Oh. And I, that's why I always tell people, I say, yo, if you have money in Africa, mm -hmm. you get treated so much better if you're a black man and a black woman from your own people because you live better, you get um, appreciated, mm -hmm. you get told how amazing you are consistently, mm -hmm. and people, it's, it's, there's no, there's no jealousy. Everybody wants to win. Is it Everybody. Win or just the culture? Both. Right. It's like if you show love, they show love back. Right. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Here, it's a little different. You right. know, if you show love, you don't know what the other person really gonna be on. Right. You know what I mean? But here, but but back home, they appreciate they you. Appreciate you. Right. you gonna eat here? Oh, you oh gonna my eat God. Here? Cause we all trying to get it together. Man, it's you crazy. Know what I'm I I went, I ended up waking up one morning. This is probably about four weeks after I got back from Ghana. And I'm yeah. I'd never get on Twitter, but I something made me check my Twitter. And I had like 500 mentions of people just saying, come to my house, come to my mm -hmm. restaurant, come. I'm like, what, the, what is going on? I checked and seen that I was trending number five in yeah, Ghana, so. in the whole country for a video that I did when I was over there about the pharmacy. Wow. And, uh, truth, hey, oh, bruh, in yes, Ghana. I, like, bruh, amazing. it blew my mind just because it was so many people that were offering things that niggas would never, never offer do. you in America. Yes, like, bro. come to my home. I want you. Are you still here? Yes. My family wants to feed you, please. Yes, my yes. daughter wants right. to meet you. And mind you, you these are people that don't, that, that don't have as much as most of us nothing. do have like, here. They want to show you love. Whatever bro. they have, they're, gonna, they're willing to, to yes. share yes. and give to you, bro. Like, yes. if it's anything, I've been saying this for the longest, man, but we got to get over there just so y'all can see how much Absolutely. love we mm -hmm. get the tour, over there, man. man. This to, is bro. my mind. This is this is. I've been thinking about it about a year and a half. Tell me. Not a year and a half. Probably like the year last year. I'm gonna execute. Mm. I want to do an African tour, mm. and I want to give back like 15, 20 percent oh. to whatever country. I mean, uh, your country that I'm yeah. at. Yeah. Yeah. And wherever I perform at, I'm gonna get 15 percent. Nine times out of ten, I'm yeah. down there yeah. getting shit back. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just wanna. You fuck with me, I fuck with y'all, and we just gonna help each other. Exactly. Exactly. I'm so man, ready. Let's I don't, let me open it up. 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 You the headline, nigga. For real. Are you ready for Buster Scott? You ready for Buster Scott? And it's, it's, it's so crazy because, like, you see. I saw so many people from so many different countries over there because, you know, in, in Ghana, at from December, like from December 1st to like January, they, it's just a party. They party yeah, the whole yeah, time. Yeah, 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 and so December. people from all over the world come there. Yeah. And man, I'm talking about South Africa, Kenya. Everywhere. The Ivory Coast, yeah. all of these different places, people are like, oh my God, I love y'all. Yeah. Like yeah, when are y'all coming so over here? Y'all so are global, bro. They I'm so. Put on Africa. That's they not real, they bro. So fake. That's bro. the the they're Africans scared. love us. What, bro? The they're scared of how if we know our real story. Yeah, our real heritage. If we know our truth, if we really truly go home, there's so much money to be made. There's right. so much build businesses to be built. Right. Entrepreneurship. They're afraid if we know this, mm -hmm. we have no reason to be here. That's what they're scared of, and Man. they're trying to keep it from us, bro. We're still laboring, quote unquote, 
quote. Yes. We're doing all the heavy lifting. Yes. We're still doing the heavy lifting. Absolutely. All right, yeah. 10 cents a day in the arms no, of bro. the angel. That's not what you see when you get there. No. I'm talking about Benzes, Range Rovers, Maybox, yes. yes. Ferraris, yes. all that. It's money over there. They, and then the, even the people who are living what you would consider to be lesser, right. That's they still are working and they, right. they yeah. ain't nobody big and they right. they Literally. want you and then whatever they have they willing to offer you. offer you bro. But i had so many people like please come sit with my family come eat we love you you know what i mean and it was just mind blowing to me because my persona my per, me, the way that i felt was like these people don't like us nah, but nah, from nah, the nah. moment i got off the plane the chico bean my brother <laughs> <laughs> welcome home my yeah. brother yeah, do you bro. need anything my brother I please my brother bro. i love you my brother i'm talking about walk me through the please airport home. make yeah, sure i got my bags so, I mean everything, and then it's yeah. like, man, I, I make jokes about it, but I went to, I never go to the strip club in America because mm -hmm. you know, I'm not doing that, mm -hmm. not even what participate. I went to the strip club in Africa, bro. I went to the silver, it's called Tell the silver about, Tell about in it, Ghana. Man. I where they from? Where the girls from? The girls was from Nigeria, and most of them. I'm just they saying, come in hustling. I, just, but, bro, I don't know. Please, I don't. I just heard listen, things. I just listen, heard things. I, I went in there with 500 American dollars, bro. <laughs> 500 American dollars. I looked like Big Meech in that bitch. It looked like BMF in that month. I'm talking about, bro, I've never had that much fun in my life. And hey, I know man. that I can't recreate it, so I'm right. only going to the strip club in Africa. Yeah. Bro, really? bro yeah. I'm talking about... I had, I gave the dude $500. He came back with a tray of African money. Man. CDs is what it is. I'm like, yeah, bro, yeah, this, yeah. this, 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 I'm talking about, I'm in there. <laughs> <laughs> Take this shit. You got the yeah. truck yeah. in Africa. Bro, and I'm oh, talking crazy, about turned up. Turned yeah. up, bro. Damn. I'm talking about turned up hey, all bro, the way, that man. That's the reason why I ain't went to Africa yet. I know I'm not from Bro, you here. might not come no, back. No, no, no. Neither, Neither one of y'all. That's what I'm saying. And I, That's what I'm saying. You would never come back. That's no, what I'm listen, saying. both of these, I'm telling you, oh. both these two, they, bro, they, I, just I even can't wait. About I got to be there to see it. Where I'm at in my mind space, where I'm at in the house. Bro, I'll be like, a miracle. I'm yeah, talking about everything you, you can think of. Place. Some of the most beautiful women you've ever yeah, seen. Why you guys going to like that, bro? My, huh? my, my, my girl is Tanzanian. She Man, some African of the most beautiful women you ever you seen in your I life. I have to go you home. Were... And, yeah, please, you and it's so but crazy, you bro. <laughs> bro. You got but family. You got family that's like linked like. Direct. Yeah, I'm 100% Nigerian. Nigeria. Yeah, like, so uh, I, I want to go to Nigeria, yeah. but everybody be scaring me talking about you're going to get kidnapped. So it's, <laughs> no, well, bro, like, I'm having no. a conversation. I swear to God. Yo, no, was a little what too soft. Yeah, you know what I mean? You were like, no, man. Listen, no. listen, man. Like, I'm, having a, no. I'm having a I'm having a conversation with a, a girl at the bar. I, it's, a, uh, it's, it's two major hotels, right? <laughs> There's two major hotels in Ghana. Like, well, it's a bunch of nice hotels, but the uh, the one that I was staying at, it's like a bar that's 24 hours, serve food and all that. So I'm sitting down there Bye. just having a conversation. I'm talking about, man, this beautiful woman just came and was like, oh my God, are you Chico Bean? I love you so much. We having a conversation. And she was like, you know, I work so hard. My rent is 18,000 CDs a year. And I'm like, 18,000, I did the math. Her rent, $1,800 a year. Mm -hmm. A and year. the fucked up a part year. is I had to act like that was a lot. I was like, damn, 18000 Because <laughs> I don't need her to know. I can pay no rent forever, man. Like, this is crazy over here. Like, you paid her rent? You paid her rent? No, I didn't. I but I, I, but I thought about it. I thought about it. I bought all her drinks, though. That was like $40. But still, it was worth every dime. I mean, that's what I thought. I had to pretend like that was a lot. I was like, 18000 Damn. But how is it? How is it? Uh, how easy, uh, mm -hmm. I'm gonna say, how accessible is it for you to build? Build in Africa? Yeah. Oh, bro, bro. we know the right people, bro. Cause oh, shout to Michael God. Plaza, he built a, a school over oh, there. I got, I, saw, I got, I got, a, I got a, a four bedroom condo in Nigeria, mm -hmm. and what I did was, um, my pops is really still tied to the culture, like for real, for every day, you know. So he was like, yo, they're building something um, in this specific area that in, in four or five years, this is right before COVID. Mm -hmm. He was like, in four or five years, this is going to be one of the biggest areas. Do you know what I mean? So get in now. Mm -hmm. So I was like, how much? He was like, honestly, bro, if you do a quarter million, it'll feel like it's a $4 million home for what you would get here. Mm -hmm. So I promise you. So I was like, all right, cool. Gave it to him. And now it's worth about... Triple that, triple that in four or five years. Listen, I told, and I just so was, we just was talking, like, like, the only thing, because the dude, 
that I was with this time was a real estate mogul over there. Right. So yeah. he rode me with Charlemagne, put me in contact with Salute to Charlemagne. And he rode me around and showed me three condominiums that they building. Yeah. Yeah. And then also, you know, some beachfront stuff that they doing. And for what but you pay, back, man. for what you, you pay, you for what bro. you pay, bro. You, you first it. of all, it's no property taxes it's and not, all that. You buy, so you, you own. own it. You it's own no, it. It's none we got home. It's, no, it's none of that. Pack your bags. Fuck this shit. <laughs> like, we learned everything. They showed me, that. They show me a, it's an area, area in a crowd where they building a bunch of a bunch yeah. of like buildings and you know condominiums and all that. They showed me three different ones. One, one bedroom condominium. Probably like I'd say probably like 2,500, 3,000 square foot yeah, yeah. condominium. One, yeah. 250. The two bedroom, 450. Yeah. The three bedroom, yeah. 550. The presidential penthouse suite, the upstairs, downstairs, upstairs, swimming pool in it. Five. Four rooms, That's about five million. Seven in LA. Six, seven million in America. Yeah. Because yeah. what I uh, Ghana is like Miami Beach. Mm-hmm. It's like South Beach. That's what it looks like. It's surrounded by the ocean. It's, Oceanfront property and all that, and then if you go over outside of the coast, like outside of the main city, then you get 70, 80 grand, bro. You can build what it'll cost you a million dollars to build here easy. So I, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna be there before, but mm-hmm. come down December with me. See, that's when the December. Come down, come down December with me. Yeah, that's when my yes. bro, my yes. friend was coming. Week. You gotta do come week. to Nigeria do a week in and December. I, I promise you, you get all the information you need, bro. I gotta, I gotta go. Yeah. I gotta go. So like, how long? Huh? Yeah. How long yeah. have you been here? So no, I was born and raised here. I was born and raised here, but I spent a lot of my childhood going back and forth. Back and forth, mostly. Most yeah, people you know where you So from. I know, I know where I'm from. So like, my mom is, shout out to all my Nigerians, my West Africans. Like, my mom is Igbo, and my dad is Yoruba. So my mom is from the village, my dad is from the city. Okay. So my dad is like one of the area boys, which means like he was one of them dudes that was really like around fella. So Fela is like the Michael Jackson of mm-hmm. African music. music he's, yeah. a, he's a heart and soul of Afrobeat. Mm-hmm. So my dad was like one of the little you know runners for him, doing whatever, whatever. So he was already part understanding the lifestyle of, of being a rock star. Mm-hmm. You know, my mom was in the village. So whenever I went back, I was able to see like both worlds. Both worlds, like damn, the fast life, and then having to walk two miles to get good water, and then get the walk two miles to get the water. Then walk back holding the water, and if you drop it, you gotta go back to get it. And then when you get back to the to where you stand, you gotta wait to boil the water to clean it. So it's a whole before you get to drink water. And, and where my mom was at, it was four or five hours. So a lesson like that at three, four, five, six, seven years old, it show you the quality of hard work. Mm-hmm. Show you Shit, how to be a man. To spill that water. Oh, bro, you get your, you get your ass whooped. You get your ass whooped. So it's like concentration. It's like determination. It's like you hungry. So what you gonna do to, to, to survive? It's all these things as a child is instilling in you. That's mm-hmm. what got me to be who I am today. Where you I'm appreciative. Home, like, cut on the faucet. You like no, oh, we see that my yeah. bedroom. Exactly. Right. So when you to go back to your when you asked me earlier, like, do you feel like you can just uh, now? I don't even know how, what that is, right. bro. I don't even right. know how to understand that. Right, because ain't no, there's no, there's no relaxation. There's no, yeah. they, they make a living out of yeah. not having. Yes. You can't complain out of, and that's so much more. Yes, mm-hmm. exactly. Right. So exactly, bro. It's a big Nigerian, you know, population yeah. in America. Yeah. Like, so have your success kind of indoctrinate, I mean, like, kind of yeah. got you in a space where people are looking at you like, okay, this is one of ours, you know, because over here as black Americans, yeah. it's difficult to get embraced by, you know, yeah. you can be the man from where you from, but you go one state over and then you're like, who the fuck is you? Yeah. Does it work the same way? It does, bro. And I've been very fortunate, man, because, you know, I've always championed being Nigerian, you know, I'm like, there was a point as an artist, I was, they asked me, yo, you gonna change your name to Little Whoop Wop Wop Wop? Like, nah, I'm gonna stick to Ro Timmy, man. That's little a Whoop strong... Wop Wop watching this, like, nigga, you better stick my name. Nigga, keep Whoop Wop and Bell Bell. I need to go and drop them mid time. Right, so for me, it was like, I always just like, let me just stay true to who I am. And when I did that, it was, okay, let me add humor, let me add butterscotch, but let me let them know he's from Nigeria. Mm-hmm. All right, cool, let me do this R&B thing, but 
who are you really wrote to me? And it was like, the first thing that started feeling natural was the Afrobeat rhythm, the Afrobeat sound, the creating that wave. And that's what worked for me. So when you're championing your name, you champion your artistry, and now you, in every interview you're saying, in, in the acting world, I'm African. It was like, man, thank you so much because, bro, bro, you know, as we was growing up, bro, it was it wasn't cool to be African. Hell it nah. wasn't cool to be Haitian. It was like you fresh off the boat. It was jokes like that for us. You know what I mean? So, who are some big ass stars in Africa that's from America that don't even know they stars in Africa? That don't even yeah, know. Yeah, like people who have no idea how big they are in Africa. Man, probably Damson, Damson from Snowfall. Uh -huh. Um, he's never know. He know he's there. John Boyega, another actor. Um, man, I think at this point, the world's so small, I think everybody kind of know. Mm -hmm. But like to actually, you got to go and feel that impact. Yeah, that's what you I'm saying. Like if you gotta, win, I don't know if they've been. Nigga, you. I don't know. <laughs> you, bro. That's who. You and you. Bro, what? Both of y'all got to go over there, man. I and feel, feel that man. love, I'm bro. Yeah. Like, I'm like, see if I'm a kid, man. I'm coming to get him, man. I'm coming back over here, man. I'm serious, bro. Like, I found for this each ass. <laughs> Bro, especially you, because of how your mind works. I, I know. I, I, I would, I would knowing that I'm, I feel a certain energy. I feel bad leaving. You would. I'd be like, I don't want to leave y'all. They'd be like, please don't leave. I'd be like, don't worry about it. Yeah. We finna build Atlanta over here, my nigga. Yeah, yeah. You wanna be from the you? west side, <laughs> nigga? You from the west side? <laughs> from the west side, Nigeria, over Atlanta, right? Yeah. Can't yeah. We from Big Can. Yeah. Yeah. Say that shit. Sure. I can see you after you filming every done filming everything, spending four months there. Yeah. Easy. I want easy. easy. I, that'll yeah. be that'll be my relaxation place Absolutely. when I'm gone. I'm like, you know, I'm going. I take that little five months. Matter of fact, you know, went to a half a year now. I know. It worked. Catch me half a year. Yeah, I, people, I mean, I'm talking about, I mean, I ain't to hear no sirens, no dogs Nothing, bobbing, bro. none of that. It was peaceful, man. The, the the lay of the land, everything is is beautiful over there, one. And then everything that you do here as far as, you know, as a consumer, right. all of those things change when you're over there because it's us. It's right. black people. It's not, you, you're not a minority it's really, in Africa. Uh, it's a, it's yeah. you, you, people and you it's just, still a form of appreciation yeah, yeah. that you don't see over black here. Black absolutely, absolutely. You get to feel what white people feel, feel like in America. In America. Yeah. You get to feel, yes. yeah, you get to yes. feel what white people feel yes. everywhere in the yes. world. Yes. Be the clip, nigga. Yeah, I'm telling you. That's gonna be the clip, nigga. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. That's real, absolutely. bro. You get to see how white people feel in America. So, <laughs> so, you know the Afro beats yeah. and, and is is then took over like it's yeah. such a major genre. Like, what did you know any of the artists I that are? I've been in this beat. What is that? I've been hearing that shit by five minutes. Mm. Been, like it? This shit. Yeah. No, this ring. Oh, the ring. Yeah. Oh, I, I hear, think about the I beat. I oh. in the beat. It's not in the beat. No, the beat. no, but I'm I'm hearing it through all us talking and all. I just oh, been hearing yeah, this shit. I get you. I get you. I don't know. Oh, you, you talking about that? Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't know what that is. Mm -hmm. Something off. What is that? No idea. You got to hold it something. Is it a speaker or something? We're going to go find it. Yes, yeah, sir. I didn't know how to be here. Sure. Uh, you know, did you know any of the artists? Like one of my favorite, Burner Boy. I've been listening yeah. to Burner Boy for years, way yeah. before it blew up. Like, yeah. did you know any of these artists that blew Absolutely. up prior to them Absolutely. blowing up here? So let me tell you, bro. Back in 2012, <clears throat> so when Wizkid first came to America, they had found out about me um, musically because one of my songs back then had crossed over back home. And this is before Afrobeats and everything. This is before Instagram and all that. It was just I don't know how they found it, but when they got here, they were like, "Yo, bro, can you?" come open up for, for Wiz, you know, his first time in America, is, we're doing 500 seaters, you know, can you do it? And he was a part of a group. This, this is 2012. Yeah, this is early. So this is when, to the point where I got off the plane and Wiz is like, hey bro, let me help you with your bags, man. Like it was, niggas was really like, oh, like we have a mission, you know what I mean? And I always love him for that because he knew he was what he was gonna be. So we're doing 500, See this, I'm performing in front of this crowd, and, and we just the conversation that we had was like, yo, in 10 years, bro, I want to be the best act. I just started acting then. Mm -hmm. Best actor, best artist, best this is. He was like, bro, I'm taking over the world, bro. That's, that was his answer. So I saw the wave in 2012. Then after that, I started just falling back into, man, let me just do R and B. And that's that was when you when you, you know, bro, as an artist and you young, you're like, 
let me try sounding like that person. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let me try sounding like that person. Mm -hmm. And you, those records are good because you can sing, mm -hmm. but they don't hit mm -hmm. because it's not true. So it took me five years to really find out who Rotimi was mm -hmm. and remembering the conversation I had with Wiz in 2012. And in 2017, that's when it hit me like, bro, just be you. You are the definition of African American. You, you genuinely are. So be the bread of R&B, Afrobeat, all in one. And that's when my, the hit records started happening. Mm -hmm. So meeting him then and seeing like, oh, Africa in about eight years is going to be crazy. Mm -hmm. Because after a while, people was like, what is this noise? Yo, I remember bringing Love Rhythm to the radio station in 2018. And then the, the program director was like, I can't even get on the beat of this. What is this rhythm? I can't. This is not good. They don't even understand. They don't even understand it. And this is before Wiz and all them had... Uh, Wiz had the record with Drake, and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, so I comfortably can say I personally brought Afrobeats to, to America. America. Talk your talk. Yeah, you know, like, yeah. like talk it's talk. a fact. You know talk what I mean? Talk. So like, uh, one, I think it was one dance with Drake and Wiz. Yeah. One dance. One dance had just afterwards it come out, and not saying it was because of me. No, yeah. but the timing. But of the it. sound. Oh, but the, the sound. Yeah, Open people's ears up the to the sound. Right. The music to all the program directors mm -hmm. with Love Rhythm and getting them used to. You love me like Juju, all that type of rhythm. Mm -hmm. And then when that started happening, it was like, oh, I like this. Mm -hmm. Then now when it's a lane for it. Now it's, there's a lane for us. So then, lane of course, Drake obviously helped as well because mm -hmm. having Wiz on it, but then that happened. Then in the middle of that, I dropped in my bed. So it's like, oh, this is really good, could work. Mm -hmm. Then the DeVito and everybody else, you know, and it was just like, so I can, I can proudly say that I did that. Mm -hmm. But it started with that conversation in them hotel rooms, like, Bro, let's just be true to who we are, bro. Like, it's okay to be African, because again, growing up, the jokes was like, oh, y'all dirty, y'all this, y'all that, Jamaicans and hate. I think it was, I think being African is a new Jamaican, because how niggas look like, oh, yeah, you Jamaican, you know what I mean? But um, yeah, bro, it was, it was, it was a tough, it was a tough grind, but when we found out who we truly were, you, now you see what the world, you know, takes on. Yeah, it's crazy, because it's artists that's like you, as Americans, we get so clouded with this being the biggest thing in the world and this, yeah. you know what I mean? But when I went to Ghana, it's artists that are superstars oh, over there. Yeah, Black bro. Sharif, Odomoto Black. Amazing. All these dudes is, Amazing. I'm talking about They're super duper stars over Agreed. there. And it just ain't translated over here yet. Yeah, but the will. fact that the, the people's ears over here are open uh, to the opening. sound, yeah. it's only a matter of time before they get one they catch over here. Absolutely. And, then they, and it's out of here. And you out it's of out of here, bro. So, you know, it's, it's divine timing, it's, it's work ethic. Is the right be everything gotta work at the right time for this thing to hit, bro? Cause there's a million artists, athletes, comedians, and the access actors, is so crazy. And the access, you this. Dude, yeah. they, they got drill music and trap music in Africa too. Odo, right? Odo Modu. Odo 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 Black. Black, bro. That's the definition bro, of what that is. Bro, he hard telling. body, bro. Man, that nigga, yeah. you, you, I gotta play some of that. Yeah, they yeah, played yeah. that shit. I went to did the radio when I was over there. I told you I did the radio when I was in Ghana. Yeah. I walked in the radio station, they was playing the Black Sharif and Odo Modu Black. I'm like, man, what the fuck is this? Mm -hmm. They're like, Odo Modu Black. Mm -hmm. Got <laughs> this is it. Champion it, this right? This is it. I'm like, sh yeah, this is it. This shit Bro. jamming. And you know, Black you know what? Mm. You know what? And, and Atlanta is one of the few places that champion the artists how Africa champions their artists. Mm -hmm. Like, you ain't heard Oh Boy yet? Mm -hmm. Even just how the radio work. You know what I mean? Like, it's just all love. It's politics. And politics. You know how that shit is. I say the only place I've been that reminded me of that is not even Atlanta. It's Detroit. Like, cause mm. when you go to Detroit. They love Detroit, all they Detroit, They do the same. Detroit yeah, they do. They, yeah, they do. They, they, they play do. Detroit. Detroit. Yeah, nobody play. Play. You go to and the Bay, too. Go here, the, Bay the, too. the Bay Area, yeah, too. Yeah, like, yeah. There's certain places you go, yeah. you're going to hear hometown music. I love that, bro. And when I was in Ghana, like, that's so they played American music, you know yeah. what I mean? The, the, the mainstream Facts, stuff. You right. hear the Drakes and the, Facts. you know what I mean? Those people. But for the most part, you hear their music, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, what is it's another dude that uh uh that was over there that's real big. I can't think of his name right now. It'll come to me, but mm. he was is real popular over there. But he's like they they call him like the Kanye West because he controversial. Like he speak his mind a lot yeah, over yeah, there, yeah, which is yeah, yeah. you know controversial. Tough, I gotta yeah. think of my man's name, but these are all people that I didn't. I mean, I'm riding around him with my driving. He just playing the music Everything. over and over, and I'm just in there. And it just feels good. Yeah, you bro. Know what I mean, who is this? Yeah. Who is this? Who is yeah. this? Because yeah. the sound, yeah. like you said, but it's the fact that. The sound was 
he was opened up to the sound over here. Absolutely, Luckily bro. for me, like I said, I had African partners, so he used to play me all the Nigerian music. It's, I can't think of the name of the artist, but I can't think of what the... Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, it's, 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 Damn, I gotta find like that shit. 15? 15, yeah. 16? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I know. Uh, you know what? Yeah, know you know somebody. the melody. It's yeah. me. Yeah. 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 I said, I know, I know. Uh, that's yeah, my yeah. shit. Yeah, what is that yeah. shit? Man, hold up. I'm nah, going to find it. You know the one I fought with now? What? Um, damn, I can't. Uh, oh, he talking about, um, he talking about, uh, uh. That's my shit. Uh, Come on, man. You know it, nigga. You know what he said. <laughs> you know it. No, which, no, hold up. Which way? I, I, I know I'm saying it wrong. That's my nigga name. Shata Wale. Shata Wale. Shata Wale. Shata Wale. Oh, Shata Wale. Shata Wale. That's the nigga name. Shata so, Wale. Why, you a connoisseur. What's the damn song? The shit is being right now. You talking bro. about? No, you talking? I think you talking about. You talking about drift? That's that's drift. Yeah, that's no, that's not there. Yeah, that's not. I, I'm saying a whole nother word. That's, 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 that's a whole different that's that's type of music, my brother. What's that? We black though. Drift is is not. Yeah, that's 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 um like dancehall reggae energy. Oh, but that, I mean, but, but it's still the same, same though. Yeah, like, what, yeah, you know what I mean? It come from the same place, like in the same that same. Essence we of, all we all African. Yeah, you know African what I mean. That's what you, Caribbean. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. But you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying. We all African. Yeah. 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 yeah, that. <laughs> yeah it's you all. Know what? Yeah. I wanna I wanna switch the gears up Talk right to quick. Talk to me. Third, get right. Hey, what's up? It's Carlos Miller coming at you with Prize Picks, where a single entry could be life changing from NHL, MLB, PGA to the NBA. Getting started is a breeze. Simply register, deposit, and select more or less on two or six player stats like points, assists, rebounds, potentially win up to 25 times your entry. Plus, if it's your first time on Prize Picks, they'll match your initial deposit up to $100. Available in over 30 states, head over to Prize Picks now and use promo code 85SOUTH for exclusive benefits. Download Prize Picks today for your daily fantasy sports experience. Daily fantasy made easy. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Hey, what's good? It's your man Carlos Miller, back again with BetterHelp. If you had more time in your day, what would you do? Work out? Finally fix that car? Read a book? Check on your homies? Many of us yearn for more time in our lives, but what would we do with unlimited time? Identifying our priorities and making them a focal point can help us incorporate what truly matters into our schedules. Therapy can assist in uncovering those meaningful pursuits, allowing us to allocate more time to them. Consider giving BetterHelp a chance if you're considering therapy. It operates entirely online, offering convenience, flexibility, and alignment with your schedule. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash 85South today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash 85South. Go y'all know you're an amazing artist. Thank the you. plaque speak for itself. Thank you, bro. Like you said, I'm just hearing you. Your journey with the acting and the music, you know, finding your ways and like you said, it's 2012 when you said, all right, I'm finna start acting. Yeah. Nigga, your career been popping since 2012. Thank you. It's been, you've been doing shit since whenever you started. Thank you. You've just been doing the shit. Mm-hmm. Being an amazing actor. Yeah. Uh, being one of the ones that, you know, they they, they call scene stillers. Come on now. <laughs> you know about that. You know about oh, that. Oh, I know about all of You know about that. A lot about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why they want to give you one, two lines. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you'll figure it out. when you're a scene stiller and yeah. then you end up having to be in five, Mm-hmm. Seasons. Yeah. Explain the 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 process and the procedure of getting a, a, a role on power and you know going through the audition space and when your agent calls and say, hey man, I got some new shit coming out. Ooh. We got time to just tell yeah, got yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. story. We got time. All right, cause we gotta start from the beginning. Start from in the beginning. Okay. In the so, beginning. So I graduated college in Chicago. Right. At this point in time, it was just music. I was 21 years old. My manager at the time was like, yo, you're so natural 
in front of a camera. Mm -hmm. Why don't you just, you know, go to go to go down to the city, go down to Chicago, and just try to get an agent. Mm -hmm. And you're like, an artist at the time. You were just an artist, you're struggling you're artist. We, we're living music. in a hood in Hyde Park in Chicago, just okay. doing music, okay. literally. And you're in Chicago. I'm in Chicago. Okay. I'm living in Chicago, like dead in the hood. So, and I was like, all right, cool, I'm gonna go. So no agency wanted to take me because I had no resume. Right. The only agency that, this is 2012. 2012. The only agency that took me was only because her son was a freshman at my college. Mm -hmm. So she was just looking out for alma mater. Mm -hmm. She was like, all right, well, let me just look out for you. You have no resume, so cool. Mm -hmm. I go in, she's like, you never act before? I said, no. She was like, all right, cool, all right, it's okay. This is a Monday. She was like, I have a I have a um, audition on Wednesday for you, but the role is already cast. Don't think you're gonna go in there and get it. I just want you to get used to auditioning because I'm good friends with the casting director. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, cool. I go in on Wednesday, the, 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 the show's called Boss. Mm -hmm. It's with Kelsey Grammer. So I go in on Wednesday and the, the directors and, and everybody's there and she's like, hey, this is the kid I was telling you about. If you have any pointers for him, it's his first day. Just, just you know. Mm -hmm. So I get in there, but I'm, still, I'm on my hustle, my music hustle. Remember during that time they had the rubber bands with the, 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 the website? Right yeah, mm -hmm. like, so I'm little, go to music.com, go to music, to the acting world, right? So I'm like, all right, cool. They all start laughing a little bit. So I was like, I didn't know that was a bad thing to do, but it, but it worked for me. But I get up there, and they're like, can you go? I do it. Boom. They're like, can you do it one more? Can you try it a different way? Boom, I do it another one. I then realize I do it eight different ways. And they're like, so this, this is your first day? I was like, yeah, it's my first day acting. Boom. Two weeks later, I get the call that I'm now on TV. I got the role. They got rid of the other guy. I got the role. Mm -hmm. So now my first acting class is episode one of this show. Mm -hmm. And Kelsey Grammer takes me in as my acting coach because he's like, yo, this is camera left, this is camera right, this is called sides, mm -hmm. this, is where the art, this is where you stand. You're I'm learning all this. Debut. I'm You're terrified, bro. Learning. I'm learning debut. So, right. But again, this is where, again, for every actor and every musician, anybody who's creative out there, yo, you never know who's watching. So episode, season one goes crazy. They're like, yo, who is this kid that came out of nowhere? Literally just walked in. Mm -hmm. Courtney Kemp Agbo. Courtney Kemp, sorry. During that time in 2012, was writing, was watching Boss, watching Boss, and was writing Power, creating Power, watching me do what I was doing and said, damn, I gotta work with that kid. Who's that guy? Fast forward two years later, now this is, the show gets canceled, boom. My dad, this is a Nigerian father, yo. Mm -hmm. My dad was like, yo, the money you made for this show, I'm putting it away for you. You only got $30,000 to work with. If you say you a superstar, if you say you like that, you're gonna make this work and get the next thing. Mm -hmm. I said, dang, okay, cool. Buy a house, uh, uh, rent a house in, 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 in Atlanta. Um, 2013, 2014, rent a, me and four of my guys who were just all artists. We didn't have no sofa, no nothing, no nothing. We had uh, lawn chairs, no TV, just a studio. We put all our money into the studio, mm -hmm. creating records, creating records. Six months go by, nobody making money. My agent called me, he's like, yo, there's this TV show called Power that's interested in you. Mm -hmm. But you gotta fly yourself to LA, you gotta put yourself up, and you know it's pilot season. So you don't know how long you're gonna be out there. Pilot season is February where it's uh, yeah. audition after audition after yeah. audition after this. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I got a, I was like, I looked at my bank account, bro. I had like $1,500 left, bro. So I'm See? like, so I'm, it's getting like crunch time. So I'm like, damn, I gotta get a flight. I gotta put myself up. I don't know. It's like, all right, cool. All right. Again, bet on yourselves, man. Bet on yourselves. It changed my life, obviously. So I was like, you know, let's do it. Put 700 at the time for a flight. Got 700 left. I find the cheapest motel on Hollywood Boulevard, East Hollywood Boulevard, that the guy was like, he was like, yo, it's usually 40 a night, bro. I said, bro, I'm a struggling artist, man. Can't, let me just, can't, let me just, can I give you 20? It'll double my, my days, I don't know. He said, I got you, I got you, it's okay. Let me stay. Second day I get out there, I do the audition. Kill it. But then two, three weeks go by. Mm. So now I'm waiting. You know this, bro. Mm -hmm. I'm waiting, because I don't know what's going on. I gotta stay there, so now it's $20. 
$40, $60. You got to get food. Luckily, you know, I was always a fly guy, so I had some gals, you know, so, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? They go to cook, so they had, hey, they had to come cook for your brother in the motel, you know what I'm mean? saying? So, you know what I mean? So, I was spacey to cook. Hey, bro, bro. What? Nigga, I was on my, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but it was ramen noodle, all type. It was, it was. I, I appreciate those times now, yeah. but it was, it was craziness, bro. So I was able to stretch the money a little bit. I get the call. Then it's like, all right, you gotta, you gotta go in for a table read. Now everybody's in there. Mm -hmm. I mean, not, uh, a, a test read. You got everybody's in there. And the person that I always, I, I rarely tell this, but the person that it was down between me and Lakeith Stanfield, mm. for Dre. So I'm like this. He's like this. I'm like, what's up, bro? Again, and I knew he was a dog then, like, because we both looked at each other like, all right, nigga, what's up, bro? Like, yeah, cool, cool, cool. And I felt the energy of like, I'm trying to get this, you trying to get this. So I was like, um, went in, murder. I know, and you could tell, you could tell when somebody got the gift, right? Mm -hmm. So I knew he was lit like that. So anyway, I was like, I gotta go crazy. So went in, boom, 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 got the roll. And at that particular time, I had $40 left, bro. $40 before I got the roll for power. Boom. Go to fly to uh, New York. And then Courtney tells me the, 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 the story of like, you know, I watched you. So I took, she was like, I took your audition tape and compared it to everyone else that was auditioning because what I saw you do on Boss, mm -hmm. the other show. Mm -hmm. So again, it's like to every creative out there, yo, honestly, please. Every line, every scene, every go opportunity, go hard. If you really believe in yourself, yo, you got to bet that on the house, bro. Yeah, that like, sounds so familiar. You that sounds bet that, exactly bro. how the Wild and Out worked for us. Did like, you see? It's the exact same way. Yeah. Like, Nick came and did auditions in North Carolina that wasn't a real audition. And he was like, you got to fly yourself to New York there you go. to the audition. There you so go. I'm like, I bet, flew myself to New York to audition. Yeah. Do the audition in New York. And I'm like, no money. Yeah. I just got laid off my job, no bread. Yeah. And they was like, you know that joke you made about having to fly yourself up? Yeah, we're going to need you to do that one more week. You got to come back for the main wow. audition. So I went home. Wow. The first time I sold some clothes, because I've right. always been a fly guy. I you know? see, brother. Yeah, I like the nice. shoes, yeah. But uh, I sold some clothes at Play Those Closet to get the, plane, the first plane ticket. Yeah. The second one, I went to my rental office lady and was like, look, man, I got an opportunity. Yeah. If you can just let me be a little bit late, yeah. I promise you I'll pay you. Just She was like, whatever you got going. Yeah. That's fine, baby. Do your thing. Yeah. We go up to the main or the, the, the group or like which was yeah. the table reading. Table read, yeah. And I never forget, this man said something to me when he came in and still resonates to this day. Right before we go into audition, it was a bunch of niggas. He was like, man, I don't know what these niggas great do. But we great get on TV, man. I love that, bro. Meant that shit. That's hard. <laughs> That's hard. That's hard, I mean, that hard. Looking on. That's hard hey. bro. Oh, yeah. I, don't I mean, I mean, nigga, I it was so great. many niggas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That nigga walked right, right up there because we knew each other. But yeah, yeah. we didn't go through the audition process together. Yeah, yeah, we had yeah. different auditions because he yeah. auditioned in Atlanta. I had to go to, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, to New bro. York. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That nigga walked straight. I seen him. I was like, what's up, nigga? He can't walk straight up to me and say, hey, nigga, I don't know what these niggas great do. That's tough. We great get on TV. That's right? tough. And then it was bro. like, we did yeah. the audition. And like you said, that three week period yeah, went yeah. past when he You don't know. You don't know. Yeah. This nigga called and was like, you know, we ain't going to be able to bring you in the workshop. Shop. I'm like, damn, he was like, mm -hmm. welcome to the cast of Wild and Out. I was That's like, hard. fuck. That's hard. That January, I officially got laid off my job. I think it was like January 11th when they sent me the letter. Yeah. That was that Friday. That Monday, I flew out to shoot Wild and Out for the first time. I ain't. Look, Look back, back since. since. That's what I'm saying. You, know what you gotta mean? bet on yourself, bro. Like, that's how, even with Fly, when Fly came in, when Fly came in, Fly had already had, like, you know, a buzz on social media, but nobody knew what that nigga was going to do on TV. Right. But I remember that first time we was in that workshop, that nigga Fly was like, nigga got me fucked up, watch this. Mm. And niggas was like, oh, this nigga raw. For real. Absolutely. I like this nigga block. raw. <laughs> I couldn't go back that block. For really? real. And like, really? that, I, you got to also understand, that's why I appreciate Nick so so much because it's like, all right, he's in a position where he's in control on some, this who I want to get an opportunity to. I love that. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. he, I remember, because, you know, I remember my audition, he was like, I see you, little nigga. I see you on Instagram. Mm. So I was like, Nick was probably the biggest nigga I ever seen in my life at that moment. <laughs> yeah. But I, he don't even know that this is a whole fast forward because I was in drumline. 
in wow. fifth grade. I, rem- the, I remember when the, they taught the nigga how to punch him. Wow. I was in the fight scene in the stand. So you've been so active? I was just always in the mix. That's just crazy. Like I was always that's in the renaissance. That's crazy, bro. My, my bro, life went this crazy. way. Yeah, yeah. That's so that's when crazy. I saw him, I was like, that's God, bro. I went right back to the fifth grade, and he was like, he was like, I see you, little nigga. I that's see your Instagram. Tough. Just do something. I did the best whatever that was. That's dope. And then once bro. it was just like, like he said, that waiting period, I was like, I ain't get no phone call. What? I'm just appreciative so, that I got the I got audition. The and yeah. them niggas were like. While not just called, they said, you going to I was like, oh. Oh, shit, right. Nigga, Bro, and then it's when like, the this world nigga, get a glimpse of this, this nigga wasn't even supposed to, this nigga didn't even have a real audition, nigga. I didn't even have an audition slot. Oh, for real? That, yeah, just it just showed up. Yeah. I just showed I was up. Like, and then I was, I just stayed all day. Yeah. And then, like, most of the people that day had to audition for the producers. Mm. But you know how a motherfucker like Nick, he showed up for like an hour right. or two. Right, he don't be that long. So I just got the audition for Nick. I got the audition yeah. for Nick. Nick. Nigga don't understand. Uh, man. I man, didn't man, get the audition so for the, I got audition for Nick. The wow. crazy part is the shit that he, he did. He just wanted to see something. He just wanted to see you be a girl. Yeah, the wow. shit that That's he, all he wanted. The shit that he did in North Carolina wasn't even a real audition. He was just doing that because he had a radio show got that it. he was promoting. And he was just doing a mock, yeah, just yeah, something yeah. to just promote the show coming back. Right time. So I went down there because salute to Dolly. Dolly worked with yeah. Nick at the time and she was like, you know, just go and, you know, do that audition. Yeah. But yeah. the crazy part is I had already met him like two years prior Fact. doing his Fresh Faces a comedy show. I went up to Gotham and did a comedy show and I was walking around in my creative process. I walk around, talk to myself, get my yeah. shit together. He stole yeah. me yeah. Yeah. doing that outside. I go up kill. When I came down, he was like, Man, you just made that up outside. I seen you talking to yourself. I was like, yeah. He was like, man, I'm around some of the best in the game. They can't do what you just did. Keep mm-hmm. working. Mm-hmm. When I walked into that audition, he was like, I remember you. You the nigga that talking to yourself. I was like, yeah, nigga. So yeah. help me not talk to myself no more. Free. <laughs> what you mean? And that's how it started. And my man beat that audition. He ended up getting on the show later, but... His, I didn't even get his vantage point until afterwards. He had went and didn't do well in the audition at all. Yeah. Literally, that's what I said as soon as I walked in the door. So he said from his vantage point, it was no laughter. As soon as he heard seeing me walk in and the door uh, closed, the room erupted with laughter. He was like, oh, this nigga's, this nigga's out of here. I'm saying, so, but just that process, most people don't I'm understand saying. that it take that because they see you to see us at this point nah, and don't bro. know that niggas was really fucked up yes, when we got bro. on. Yes. We was fucked up the first couple oh. years of yes. being on. Yes. Like, we had to, it take we had 10 years. to make that shit work, bro. bro. It take 10 years to hey, get boy. your moment, bro. Hey, boy. Come on, bro. Shit ain't start getting good at DRL. You understand me? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> All right, boy. Now when I realized, I was like... I can finally get out my mama's house. <laughs> yeah, man. Shit going on. Man, bro, I'm Not talking about, real. we was, I'm talking about going on the road, breaking down, what, 250, 300, nigga, mm. a piece. Mm. But we was doing five, six shows in a week doing that. Yeah. But just, I'm yeah, talking about when you're yeah. colleges, Especially everything. Especially when you know what? where you're going and you know your destination. Absolutely. And you, know, and you understand that God is putting you in positions to win. Yes. You realize, okay, all I got to do is apply faith, apply energy, B, yes. go hard at my craft, yes. everything is going to work out. Absolutely. Especially once, that's all we pray for is just the ball to get a little roll. Yep. Yes. Just a little, keep going. Just just a little roll. Again. I just need a little roll. And it yeah. ain't flat either. It got yeah. a little pump. Bro. I, all of a sudden, it got a little air in it. Yep. We, yep. Now we're bouncing. Yep. Oh, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me tell you even, uh, get real. just to piggyback off what y'all talking about, bro. Like, So when I got on Power Season 2, right? Dre was supposed to get killed off Season 3. He wasn't supposed to survive. He was not supposed to talk much. He wasn't supposed to, he was just supposed to be there and just be, you know, the goon nigga, the the hood guy. You know what I mean? That energy. And when it got to the point where I was like, okay, I only got two lines. What could I do to make a moment? And I was like, okay, I got to do everything with my eyes. Mm -hmm. So when they started seeing, like, yeah, I answer something and I do something like, huh, they'll be like, oh, we can, oh my God. Then they started realizing this is when Twitter was going crazy. So, Oh, that Drake character up to something, up to something, because it's just putting more than just mm-hmm. what the words say and taking advantage of an opportunity mm-hmm. to the point where they were like, oh my God, we got to make you Ghost 2.0, da 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 and they had to re- redo my contract mm-hmm. because it's like, yo, the moment is here. You, you roll the ball, I got to take I it and go ball. crazy. But well, when did you, know you realize saying? that that being on power, yeah. when did that, mo- that, that success hit you as far as the people not not necessarily the industry and all that but when yeah. did you feel like oh shit like the people are resonating question. with this with this character i think it was um season three 
Season two, it was like, oh, you part of, okay, that's lit. Season three is when the conversation started being like, oh, he's about to be on a ghost's wing. And when start, people started seeing it and they started seeing the similarities and how I was acting and how like, how I was stealing scenes in that moment, it was like, okay, wow, like, girls love it, niggas respect it, old people love it, da-da-da-da-da, white people love 50, so they're gonna watch it. So it was a, it was a, like, oh, wow, I'm outside. And I remember when um, I was around, um, this is like Trey Songz, I think it was, mm -hmm. and everybody went crazy for him. And that's my dog, so it was like seeing that everybody gave me the same reaction. It was like, oh, you really, and I didn't expect it. What? You know, that's my bro, so I'm just, we were in Vegas, we looked over the balcony, they went crazy for him. I'm like, oh, that's crazy, they're going crazy for my man. I looked over, they were doing the same thing. So I was like, oh, you really did it. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, I'll never forget, he was like, bro, congratulations. Like, now turn it up even more. You gotta go up. And, and you know, that was that was the drive. Yeah, it's oh, always, yeah. I always like to ask those moments because those are the, to me, those are the surreal moments Absolutely. that you and the people react to you. I'll never forget, for, for I know one for me was when we went to that All-Star game that that celebrity all star game and me and this nigga was just walking down Times Damn, Square. Wow, we wow, banned that. We banned wow, like, wow. Yeah. That shit crazy. Like they, we thought they gave us the wrong shit on accident. That's crazy. Like they, they gave us some good ass seats. Yeah, like, yeah, like yeah. two of the best seats at the shit. That's hard, bro. Everybody got to walk by us. Yeah. So we just sitting there like, man, this is fucking crazy. They must, they must don't know we. Yeah, nigga. bro. This mm -hmm. nigga say at the eve like, fuck it, nigga, let's walk on the court. I love that. So we walk what on they gonna the do? Kick us out? No, yeah, we walk you on did. The court. You earned we see, that. We see Dave Chappelle, so That's we like, crazy. man, we can go say what's up today. Gotta yeah. say what's up today. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. As soon as we get up on that nigga, he was like, Carlos Chico, man, what's happening, wow. man? How y'all doing? We was like, nigga, you know us? Wow. That's then a we great leave. Moment. When we leave, we walking down the street. I don't even know if you remember. Remember we was walking down the street, nigga, we turned around. Yeah. It was up. I'm talking about three blocks down of people following us amazing, down the street, Amazing, bro. amazing. And we like, man, what the bro, fuck? Bro, it could go two ways it's for a, artists or like, entertainers at that moment. Bro? Like, it could go to this? your head right? and be like, oh, I'm, I'm lit. Like, oh, oh we nah, good. Blew my mind. Like, you know what I mean? It's time to go crazy. Or it could drive you. Right. And this is where a lot of us fail. Now, that fame shit don't work no more. No, it don't. No, 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 no. it don't. It's longevity. It don't. It's yeah, longevity. Yeah, I, I'm bro. another nigga who they gonna pay less money. <laughs> right. Exactly. Get your shit together. Yeah. Exactly. I'll tell you one of the moments for you that was funny as fuck. You probably don't remember this. Uh, when when you first came, when I say probably, it's probably about your second or third season, you was all the way settled into the, right. the, the process. And I guess when you and Emmanuel, when Emmanuel was the, the famous person, you would go and be like, hey, y'all, they go oh, Emmanuel, yeah, 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 yeah. Man, that nigga did that shit to you. We was on tour, that first tour. Wow. Where you were like, hey, y'all, hey, y'all, like, oh, shit. He was like, yeah, got your ass next, oh, your turn. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I didn't care about being popular yeah. and fame is different. Yeah, I'm used facts. to being popular. Facts, facts. But fame come with the annoying shit. Absolutely. What? So when I used to see Emmanuel get annoyed, I used He's to love find that. that shit so funny. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll be around so your folks be like, DC, what's up, nigga? But that's it. That's all I'm gonna get. DC, what's up? I get a picture too. DC, what's up? Yeah, 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 yeah. That nigga Emmanuel get me, he, he tried to get into the car. I'm like, we got Emmanuel hustling everybody. He'll look at me and I just get out and cry. It's 40, 50 people around that nigga. He's just looking at me like, I can hate you. <laughs> that nigga, boy, that about nigga, a year and a half. Boy, that nigga I didn't got even that know nigga so vicious, man. That motherfucker said, DC, don't fly everybody, and they be like, ah. Yeah. That nigga looked at me, he be like, I got your ass. It's a good feeling, bro. I said, I feel you, bro. It's a good moment. I fuck up, I used to do that. It's a good now, moment. what was that feeling like to be a superstar in two lanes, though? You got right. the movie shit, TV show jumping yeah, off, yeah. then you got the music shit doing yeah. crazy he, numbers. He like, numbers. How were you able to just, like, balance both of them at the same time, jumping like Honestly, bro, it was, I mean, it's, it's gonna sound cliche, but like, it was a lot of sacrifice, bro. Like, I couldn't party like most people was. I couldn't really enjoy being out, wilding, flying this and doing that. Nah, it was like I had a responsibility. You know, I felt like I had a whole country, a whole continent on my back that I gotta represent properly. And then it was just like, I've always been able to to, to multitask, mm -hmm. so I love. It didn't feel like work to me for a while. Like being lit and, and acting and being, it just pushed me, bro. Like the the most amazing feeling was when we had gotten the ratings, and it said Power is now the number one TV show on, on, on cable on Pop TV. Your shit. Yeah, Pop your shit. but then Pop I also had the number one R&B album at the same time. I see that. You know what I'm saying? Come on, man. How you do that, man? So so so, so crazy. So for me, it was just like. 
Man, God, just give me discernment. Yes, sir. Give me wisdom. Yes, sir. Surround me around the right people. Put me around the right team. Even if, you know, I finally feel like I got the right team. Man, shout out to my brother Punch. Mm-hmm. But it's like, punch. you know, punch yeah, that's my yeah. dog. You know, so like, it felt like you gotta want it, and you gotta have a team that want it more than you. They gotta do it while you not, want not, not more than exactly. They like, definitely do. I don't want them more than you. They gotta in a way, want. Yeah. They know how great you are. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like when you have that team that understand your greatness and understand where your strength yeah. can can be displayed. And, Absolutely. And they like, I got somebody that could be. Absolutely. We're too busy saying, look, you need to go talk to them. Why yeah, should I yeah, be telling talk, you yes. to go talk to them? Bro. You should already know the importance of talking to them. Bro, like, the best thing we can do as creators is know that we're brilliant in what we do, right? Right. But we have to surround ourselves, and me and Punch talk about all the time, you have to surround yourself with experts that are great at what they do mm-hmm. and allow them to do what they do to maximize the ability of where y'all gonna go. Right. If I'm doing this, I want this, da, da, da. You, first of all, that means you don't trust your team. Right. Then you're taking away from what you really gotta do. Right. Then it, so you put- Energy consuming. It's energy consuming, yeah. so right. you can't succeed if your team ain't right because you gotta force to do everything. At one right. point, I was the booking agent, this isn't this, da, 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 da. Right. I was doing, uh, you know what I'm saying? And like, that's when I felt the most pressure and I, and I felt the most, I almost got depressed. I almost hated music, I almost hated entertainment because I had had to wear so many hats. But it was like, hold on, let's put ourselves in, let me put my people position. in position trust and trust them to do it. And then you start seeing the money come in, start seeing the roles, start seeing the music hitting everything and the tour and all that, because it's just also surrendering to the process. What do you look for? What did you, well, what did you look for in those people? Being as though you wore all those hats, like yeah. you had that responsibility, it creates a level of understanding from each position. Yeah. So what did you look for in those people when you, you know, put them yeah. in place? What were some of the qualities you look for? You gotta be a dog. You gotta be tenacious. You can't take no for an answer. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You gotta look at me and 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 if I'm up at four, you up at four. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So that that mindset. Then you have to be able to really prove and show that you are really good at what you do. Mm-hmm. You have to breed results. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Then also I love it when someone isn't <laughs> Yeah, for real, you got to, bro. Damn. So and then also somebody who's not phased by fame. Because if you put somebody who's not around it, around it, and they start losing their mind they because become the they become the artist. I've seen that happen six times with people I work with. Exactly. The the they want to do all the other things, but then it's like when they know that this is a job, we got a mission, we got a point to prove, we got a this and this, then that changes everything. You know what I'm saying? And then also spiritually, they got to respect where I'm coming from, and then, you know, I respect where they're coming from. And you know, and, and don't put me in harm's way, I'll put them in harm's way. Well, that fame is a drug. Like, yeah. when you said Bro, that, it's, though, it's, it's like, a, it's, it's a, a lot of people who still, what? like, they ain't all the way in it, but they will. Ain't they nobody addicted. looking. Yeah. They're addicted. Why you think, I'm going to tell you what. Why you think clout? <laughs> clout? Clout shit? Yeah. Because it's getting viral. Yeah, they love motherfuckers like, like, any attention and good attention. Anything. No, it ain't. It is to me. All it is to me is just make people who don't know you act like they know you forever, and people who know you forever act like they don't know you at all. That's all fame. Does. Yes. It just people who don't know Born. you will run up on you and act like you've been in their family forever, and people yes. who've been in your family and knowing you your whole life will treat you That's like crazy. a stranger. Yes. Said that, so that means you know yes. what I mean? People who chase clout have lack of love. Yeah, they yes. looking for a validation from validation the, from the validation that they like think they like, see. You think I'm right? Yeah. yeah. Right, right, and they don't right. even understand the, the, the importance of being able to have people around right. you when fame comes that it can tell you you wrong. Yes, honestly, I forgot to say honesty, bro. You know what I mean? You yes. got I don't want nobody around me who can't tell me, nigga, stop, stop. You're that ain't you look it. crazy. Hey, we done all look at each other when yeah. we done said some shit. You be like. Nah, that ain't it. That ain't it. <laughs> like, no. like, look, they're like, yeah. like, when Because yeah. some people are scared to hold people accountable because Absolutely. they're afraid that that's going to be, I can't say nothing because that nigga yeah. going, Absolutely. oh, I'm going to lose my, I, I can't right. have nobody around because I, I can become a danger to myself in that Absolutely. regard. Because when right. things start working and working and working, you yeah. can think that every idea you have is the right yeah. idea or everything that you want to do is the right way to do it. Yeah. And it takes that vantage point for somebody to be like, that's why I, I love the black woman so much because they understand us now. to they where they can step in and be like, hey, 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 nigga. Yeah. Absolutely. Don't do that. Yes, Absolutely. That ain't the thing to do. Yeah. Absolutely. They don't even have to say it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a look that yeah, black yeah, women get you like, 
I ain't saying don't do what you're doing, yeah. but I know you and you wouldn't do, do what that. you're doing. Or you'll fuck around right. and be blunt and be like, you really about to do that? Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. that make, that's well, even no, worse. Now, I wasn't about to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't about to do shit. I was about to say. I'm mad that you thought I was going to do that. Exactly. It'll snap you out of it. Wait. 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 Punch was just, we was just talking, just driving up, and he reminded me of something like, and no one else would tell me straight up, like, like, bro, don't do this. Right. Make sure you don't do that. Mind this thing that you think you like that. And it's like, wow, if I make this whatever mistake or whatever mm -hmm. situation or whatever, at I'm at fault and it affects everybody. Mm -hmm. So the fact that like it's this mindset of my brother, do right, do this, do this, let's think of it this way, let's think of it this way. You need that in right. all yeah. capacity to Absolutely. succeed, yeah. yo. Yeah. Facts. So what does Road Timmy want? Mm. Because I'm hearing the journey. Right, bro. I'm hearing the journey. Did your music always, you was always in music, or did your music and your, and your acting start around? Hey, did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, there's no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get CC at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees do apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as quarter one 2024 validated by the Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of the first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC is a registered broker dealer. Like the same time. No, so music started when I was, okay. So my mom is a, is a prayer warrior. Okay. So when I was in her womb, she had a dream and Bob Marley came to her and said, your son is going to finish my legacy. So a lot of people don't know. God damn, yeah. mama. That, yeah. that guy's yeah, yeah, yeah. pressure to put on a nigga as a young nigga. What? Yeah. Don't let Bob Marley die. <laughs> Boy. <laughs> so, damn. Bro, so if you know any Nigerian friend, you're a partner in Nigeria, yeah. so their parents, our parents are like, you have to be a doctor, lawyer, engineer, yeah, pediatrician, librarian, that's right. it. So when I came out singing, my mom was like, I remember this dream. I have to nurture this gift. Oh, man. So at three years old, four years old, my mom had me as a Nigerian wedding singer. So I was going from <laughs> Houston, Connecticut, Philadelphia. You are together. Yeah, I was like, Jesus. You are together. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can you imagine you go to a uh, Nigerian wedding and a four-year-old come out? Yeah. Want to take everybody for family. <laughs> Literally. In three Literally. Piece. Literally. In a three-piece. Three-piece. Yeah, I'm going to send y'all the picture. I'm going to send y'all the picture. I'm going to send y'all the picture. Think of it. Hallelujah. <laughs> literally, 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 bro. So, That's fire. bro, but at Nigerian weddings, they throw money. They right. throw yeah. bread at, you know, so. Thanks, so you get throw money. I'm getting you? what? Oh, man. So, I'm like, so I'm, brother, He's four. I'm four. So, I'm getting like literally maybe five, six thousand because of as many, because it's, it's a spectacle. It's like, a four-year-old singing, so they, my daughter, come on, man. I'm in there. The Nigerian way to sing. Let's so, do it. So when I'm when I'm realizing that, that stick with you. You're right. right. Like my gift is breeding money at this particular time, and it sticks with my parents. They're like, oh, we have something. So they nurtured it, nurtured it, nurtured it. And to, you know, I'm in, I'm from Jersey. So the Apollo Theater is was big, and it's big in New York for us, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So for, for everybody. Uh -huh. Yeah, for everybody. So I performed at the Apollo Theater when I was 14 and I won. Mm -hmm. Came back the next week, I won. So then Jay-Z's nephews moved into town when I was 15. And they rap and they were, they were doing music. So they were like, yo, like, I hear that you the singer around here. Like, you want to join our group. But if you really want to do this, we got to be serious because our uncle, put, the pressure is on us to be better than our uncle at the time. Mm -hmm. So Ho was like, listen, if y'all really want to make music, y'all got to come down to my condo. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, at 15. So I, I had to go. He was like, come down to the condo and write all your music, perform all of it in front of me. Let me critique everything, because I got to see personally what's going on. 
to about six, seven months. Every three weeks, we were taking the bus, taking a car to go to Jay-Z crib, perform in his living room, and he'd be like, yo, bro, that was good, nah, but your voice is a little too strong here, blah, 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 blah. So I'm getting critiqued by one of the greatest at 15. That's and he's crazy. telling you, yo, like, you got it. You got it, bro. Please understand, you, un you have it. I said, okay. So that propelled me at that point, like... You about a nephew, and you tell them shit. Yeah, you told him, he told him. <laughs> He told, hey. he told, he told, he told. Hey, give him a bag, man. <laughs> Bro, you keep thinking. Yeah. You get this goddamn luggage, man. Man, shout out to Spanky, Ramel, all that. But, like, they put me on that situation, and it changed my, my perspective as a creative, bro. Right. And at 15, you impressionable. Hell right? yeah. So you got Jay-Z saying you 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 like that. That's a, that's a nub drive. It's a nub drive to last you for your lifetime <laughs> as, a, as, a, as a person. So right. that, you know, that drive, and I got to college, and I was just making music and selling my mixtapes while I was in, on campus, skipping class, standing at the corner it was, selling it was my It was a regular mixtape. music hustle oh, it was a regular, trying, to get, trying to get on since I was four. Yeah, but then you said you also had a song to go big over okay. there in your country. Yes. You, you right now. So I had a record called Beautiful Music right? that I recorded in my dorm in college. And when I graduated, we just put it out. And this is when MySpace, so you add in top five, you add in everybody to your music page at this time. And I used to do that for eight hours a day, eight hours a day, eight hours a day for the whole summer. Damn. And I started realizing like fans, building fan bases all around the world. And I'll say that I was Nigerian. So one of the top, his name was Tino, Tito, something like that, T something. He found the music on MySpace and the song Beautiful Music kind of just took off over there. And they were coming uh, down to America like four months later. And that's when, you know, so again, you just got to, Put the work in and invest in yourself, man. Keep so, on going. So man. what's next, man? You know, I mean, I, I personally, you know, hate that question just because, yeah. you know, the fact that you you don't know when you, you got know. that type of history. Like, if a nigga would have asked you what's next when you left Jay-Z. Absolutely, absolutely. Room, like, what's next? Nigga, platinum, nigga. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, let you talk I gotta about? get yeah. inside yeah. school, though. Man, man. Man. What is that nigga, platinum, nigga? I just left Jay-Z living room, man. I'm gonna fuck what a nigga talking about. Yeah, you're not lying, though. Where is the power franchise headed? Where is it at? Where is it headed? Where's it headed? What's... What can the fans expect from that? Oh, bro, I, I ain't been a part of power for six years, bro, bro. So I don't even you know anything. Home? Yeah, bro, I don't know nothing was going on, honestly. Damn. I mean, I think, I think, I think five for changing my life, but right. it's a job. You know, yeah. it was my job. It wasn't, you know, it's. I did my job and I move on. You, you know what I'm saying? Gone and then you show back up and you die. Oh no, they burnt, they burnt my character ass, bro. Nigga, they done brought motherfuckers back to yeah, life. I'll be a ghost? Yeah, you no, won't be butterfly no more. You'll be dumb. Yeah, see, they you they can't do this, baby. They'll they they go, they go back in time and see like your leg move. Yeah. Like, oh, that nigga ain't even yeah. die. Nah, nah. <laughs> Oh, they oh, they the ankle is But I'm asking yeah. wrong questions, yeah. not what's next. Nigga, you got a skincare line. We yeah. ain't talking yeah. about. Speaking yeah. of being burnt up. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> you got a skincare line. Thank what you, what made you want to do a you skincare can't take line? You. No, it's for you. It's for you. Yeah. Right, so now, so, so, yeah, it's already, I already <laughs> used it though. But you can, you, you can use that. That's some African shit. You can use the recipe. You can Make sure it was good for you. To make sure it was good. Look at my skin. Look at your skin. Look at you. Had to make sure it was good for you. Not so. So basically, what happened? This some good lotion. So it's called Favor Skin, right? Let me get some of that. Um, and what happened was during the pandemic. Thank you, bro. Yeah, it's minerals from the Dead Sea, 100 natural. So what happened was 2021. It was COVID, and I started breaking out because I was stressing and I was just going crazy, and I was using bad stuff on my face, and I was like, I got a call again. Divine timing, God. Andy Hilfiger calls me from the Hilfiger, Tommy Hilfiger brand and all that, called me and it's like, yo, bro, I see your butterscotch videos. Mm. What do you put on your face? What's going on with your, like, what is that? What is that? I said, oh, I just used this other brand. He was like, good he was like, yo, what, are you gonna, have you thought about endorsing something? I said, bro, if I'm gonna get into skincare, I wanna own my own skincare. Mm -hmm. And he was like, Okay, cool, dude. Let's do it, man. You want to go 50-50? I said, I said, yeah. He was like, yeah. All right, so look, I have a, a, a company in Israel 
they have this stuff from the Dead Sea, and the Dead Sea is like a healing, it's yeah. like a healing. Yeah, the minerals. Yeah, minerals. Please, please, yeah. Please, yeah. Please, my friend, please. Yes. Yeah. Please, <laughs> please, don't break my heart, please. <laughs> please, <laughs> please, Come please, on, please, before you, please. please. <laughs> what is this on your skin? Please, yeah. Yeah. please, hey, please, hey, please, one second. Don't break my heart. Yeah. Please, please, let me show you something, please. <laughs> yeah. Don't yeah. break yeah. my heart. Yeah. <laughs> so, so the Dead Sea, so if people don't know, it's in Israel. And it heals like skin I mean, cancer. Okay. It heals like psoriasis. It heals eczema. So I was like, yo, honestly, man, I want to make something that uh, black brothers and sisters can use on their skin without any preservative, and it's all natural, and it's a healing place, healing thing from the source. Mm -hmm. And Israel is the holy land, you know what I mean? Like, it, it started there. So for me, it was like, I want something that will change people's lives, so I called it favor. Because it's like, when I started realizing that it was changing my life and doing like, what it's doing to my face, or I could change people's lives. Because a lot of people's insecurities come from their skin. A lot of people's insecurities come from a lot of outer stuff. So I was like, I, let me be a part of that healing process. We created it. So it was about to be in Target. Uh, we about to do a meeting with HSN. Man, she and and, and, and the, the testimony. Bro, I got you, I got you, I got you. But like, favorite skin in it, in it. And it like, when I put my finger and my hand into the Dead Sea, I saw like the, the dirt come off. It, it, it naturally exfoliated everything. And it was a natural glow. So, you know, we the only ones that got minerals from the Dead Sea in the that's States. That's out, you know, so I think it's changing. And then the, the testimonials that we've had, like we've had about four or 5,000 testimonials of people using it so far. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you've changed my life. You helped me, man. Like I'm, I, they show me before and after pictures, our whole team. So. It's just been a blessing, man. So good, if you want to get it, it's favor skin from both men and women. Talk well, we got you some 85 yeah. South Show gear. Oh, thank you, bro. My yeah. brother. So we thank took you. your skin care. Oh, come care. on, nah. We we We're going to do a promo code it. 85 South on the, on as well. 85 Favor. Oh, yeah. oh, 85 Favor. 85, 85 Favors. Yeah. I like this. We do favor. 80. Jesus. I love you. Together. Thank you, bro. Thank you, bro. Yeah, make sure y'all go get anything Ro yeah. Timmy put yes, out. Sir. Got new singles dropping. Yes, got sir. new faces. Oh, yeah, yeah. Y'all got a track, too, so y'all got a track. Yeah, we got, yeah, we got a record out, man, that's going, going crazy. Going. And also, I got a double album that's coming out in July. Oh, oh, shit. No. Double we got a double album coming out in July. It's, it's called... Um, not yet, but it's half Afro B, half R&B. Mm -hmm. okay. So all my fans get... Seven records of R&B, seven records of Afro. Talk to you, talk. And it's going to be that. And you know, this is your first time stopping through here. Yeah, brother. Don't let it be the last. I'm yeah, here. This is my, y'all my family, yeah, bro. Yeah, man, That's what I'm sure. saying. Yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, my my family, bro. Yeah, we definitely got to get you to sign Thank the you, table, man. Yeah, sign yeah, the table. Yeah, bro. 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 Y